Right, what an adventure it's been over the last three months. I really don't know where I am with channel updates at the moment. I've completely lost track of what's what. The main reason for this video is to just update you on what is happening with the Royal Enfield Classic 500. Because I've had the bike for a month now and people are starting to ask, you know, when are we going to see a review, when are we going to start doing some modifications, that kind of thing. So I will get onto that in a few minutes before the end of this video. But I just want to cover off one or two other things first while we're at it. First off, Motone Customs and the Rule Britannia Photograph Competition. I've not actually spoken to Sam about it for a week or so now, so I'm not really sure what sort of response they've had so far this month but it is an activity that I'm really enjoying so I thought I would take this opportunity to give you all a reminder not only that whenever I do give you a reminder I always realize after publishing that I've missed something out that I really should have put in so the more I do it the more chance I've got of getting the correct information across to everyone all photograph entries should be sent by email to Sam at Motone Customs via the email address that I will leave in the video description down below. And your competition entry should be entitled Uncle Stew's Photo Comp. That's a bit I keep forgetting. Now this is quite important because Motone Customs are sent photographs of customers' bikes all the time and it just helps Sam to identify which photographs are for the photo competition and which photographs are from people that just want to share photographs of the bike. That's the reason for that. He did mention something about a dedicated email address for photograph competition entries, but as far as I'm aware, nothing's happened on that front as yet. Now, the rules are that any motorcycle can be entered into this competition, but it must have at least one Moton Customs accessory fitted, and it must be be clearly visible in at least one of the photographs that you enter and you're allowed to enter up to three photographs those three photographs must include at least one full-length photograph of the motorcycle and all photographs must be taken in landscape mode not portrait mode now the rules on this particular June photo competition have changed slightly as some areas now have more freedom you can take photographs of your bike whilst you're out and about on rides but we do ask people to be responsible obviously the social distancing thing is still very important at the moment so for the purposes of this competition we ask that you do not take photographs where members of the public are in sight and we would prefer it if you take the photographs in remote locations not locations where there are crowds of people if there are people visible in the photographs I'm afraid your entries will be disqualified now for those of you that are still on lockdown you are still free to go ahead and take lockdown photographs on your own property you are not being excluded from this photo competition. Hopefully, I've got all the relevant information in this time. Fingers crossed. Now, Motown Customs are offering a very generous prize pool for this competition, which seems to expand every month. Although, I can't guarantee that's going to continue. And to help people out, just to make this a little bit more fun and a bit more affordable and easy for everyone, Motone Customs are continuing with the Rule Britannia 15% off promotion. Now, this discount is exclusive to viewers of this channel. It's not a discount that's been offered across the board. You don't have to be a subscriber, although I would very much like it if you did subscribe. But the link to Merton Customs website, along with the discount code, which is Britannia, is included in the video description down below. I really do think that Merton have gone above and beyond during this pandemic. I think it's really refreshing to see a company like Merton giving as much back to their customers as they possibly can and trying their best to create some 
positivity for the motorcycle community. There's enough doom and gloom in the world at the moment, and this has got to be costing them shed loads of money to keep doing this. It's times like this when the real stars in the motorcycle industry start to shine. Now, as I said a couple of weeks ago, they are going through a major restocking program. They've finally got the Black Tanto back on the shelves, along with all the pannier reels that they currently do for the very models. Apparently, they just can't make enough of them. And for the first time, the black powder-coated version of the pannier reels for the air-cooled Bonnevilles is now available. Right, moving on. You may have noticed that I am still using quite a lot of B-roll. Now, no one's actually complained about this, but I thought I'd take this opportunity to sort of explain what's going on. Now, my partner does work for the local education authority. She's an attendance officer. And in line with the government's guidelines, she is still working, but for the most part, she's working from home. She spends a lot of time on conference calls and making calls both to parents and to the school to collate various pieces of information together for the various government reports that have to go out daily. And we don't live in a large house, which means we've got to sort of share the airtime, for want of a better word, out each day. Otherwise, we've found that our work practices sort of interfere with each other. This means that basically I've had to modify the way I operate the channel for the moment. And this does put certain time constraints on me that I don't normally have. And hopefully it's only a temporary thing. I hope you understand. And finally, before we get onto the bullet, it's the subject of music again I've had more complaints in the last few weeks about the music that I use on the channel than I've actually had in the last three years now I fully appreciate it's not everyone that's doing this but there is a growing number of people that are sitting there watching free on-demand content and then complaining about my choice of music. Now, I'm not the BBC. I don't have a multi-million pound sound recording studio. And as much as I've invested a lot of money, what is a lot of money to me anyway, into sound recording equipment over the last six months, the audio dubbing on these videos is still, to me, far from perfect. And in order to mitigate those imperfections, I put background music on to help disguise those imperfections. And I'd like to point out that the current audio setup that I have is only possible because of the patrons of this channel who donate money on a monthly basis to help me make these improvements. People who, funnily enough, don't complain. Now, playing music on videos on YouTube is a veritable minefield. You can't just pick something out of the latest top 10 and play it because within a matter of weeks your channel will be shut down due to copyright claims. Copyright free music or the rights to use music doesn't come cheap. I have in the past paid licenses for supposed copyright free music and even then I've still run into revenue issues over advertising. It really is a complete headache it's a minefield so I now source all music from YouTube's music library this is music that YouTube has paid for that has a copyright free license with it that I'm free to use for the most part it's not the best quality music in the world although there are some really good tracks among it but when you're producing two videos a week, you soon start getting through the material that's available and your choices become a bit limited. Now, I'm not going to apologize for it because I'm doing the absolute best that I can under the circumstances. But I've got to the stage now where, make no mistake, if you leave a comment to me that I find insulting, you might not like the response you get. Right, and finally, on to the Classic 500. Now, I refer to it quite a lot as the Bullet, and people keep correcting me, telling me that it's not Bullet, it's a Classic 500. It's a Bullet. The Classic 500 is based on the bullet. It is essentially a bullet with different mudguards and various styling accents that allow them to call it the Classic 500. 
but it is a bullet, so I'll continue to refer to it as a bullet. Now, as you know, I do not do first impression videos on bikes. I make these videos to give you the very best information I can possibly gather. And I've always found that first impression videos are at best inaccurate and at worst very misleading for people. So what I intend doing with the bullet is a series of reports. The first of those reports starting at the 300 mile mark. My experiences of the bike as it started to run in and how the bike matures as miles are put on it. Now there's one thing that I've identified through watching other first impression reviews as I've ridden this bike and that is that the idea of the amount of vibrations you get from this bike is routinely misrepresented and I think this is because they are just first impression videos and in most cases those bikes are very new. All singles when new pre-braking will exhibit far more vibration than any other multi-cylinder bike but you can tangibly feel the vibration lessen more and more with each ride that you take and I am quite positive that this is something that first impression reviewers are oblivious to. I've seen quite a few reviews where the reviewer has basically been one of the first people to take the bike out for a ride and for the first hundred miles vibration is really really noticeable. I put 300 miles on the bullet now and once you get past the 100 mile mark the bike becomes a different animal when you get past the 200 mile mark the bike becomes a different animal again the bullet has a lot in common with a fine wine when it's new it can be a bit harsh but as the miles roll on to the engine and the running gear it becomes much smoother and more refined at the 300 mile mark, I don't find vibration really to be that obtrusive. Don't get me wrong, it's not multi-cylinder smooth and I don't think it ever will be. But I've heard reports from owners that these bikes don't hit the prime until they've done over a thousand miles and I can well believe that. Now as I say, I've covered 300 miles and the bike is now ready for its 300 mile service which I will be doing myself. I've got the oil sorted out, I've also got my Haynes manual and I'm just waiting for the oil filter to come through from DW Motorcycles in Scarborough where I got the bike from. Hopefully the first full proper report will be coming up in the next week or so. We'll also be filming the oil change and general first service of the bike. After that I intend doing a 600 mile report followed by a 1000 mile report. I will of course be reporting the good and the bad. There are one or two superficial warranty claims that need to be addressed with this bike and as it stands at the moment MotoGB have been a little bit slow responding but as we do have a current ongoing pandemic and I'm told that they're working on a skeleton staff I will give them the benefit of the doubt for now. Now as I suggested in Wednesday's video I do intend doing a little bit of travelling on this bike this year. Obviously lockdown regulations are going to have a huge bearing on how this can be conducted. As it stands, campsites, bed and breakfasts and hotels are not allowed to open. So I'm going to have to wait and see how that scenario unfolds over the next few weeks before I can decide what format this is going to take. If push comes to shove, I'm just going to have to do some day trips. Now, as for modifications, this is a difficult one with the bullet because to me the bike is pretty much perfect as it is. The big Euro 4 exhaust system has to go. It's ridiculously big and it spoils the look of the bike. And likewise I am going to fit a DNA performance filter. Not with a view to making the bike go faster, I just believe bikes respond so much better when the engines can breathe properly. Now I do need to look at some sort of racking system uh, in order to be able to use panniers on the bike. I've not decided as yet what I'm going to go for. 
and there may be one or two other little modifications that I need to make just to make the bike a bit easier to live with. On the whole, I'm pleased with the bike so far, but if you want to know more, you're going to have to follow the upcoming videos. Right, that's it for this week. I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you have, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And if you are subscribed, don't forget to hit the notification button so that you can be informed whenever I upload a new video. I will, of course, be back next week, so if you have to ride, please ride carefully, and I'll see you soon.